Today we're diving deep into PyTorch data loaders and data sets. So I'm gonna start with just an overview here and then we'll work through an example and some code. All right, so it all starts with this data set class here that we have in PyTorch. And there's two functions, two dunder functions you have to implement for this to work. You need the length, which returns the size or the number of samples in your data set. And then this get item function, which takes this index and returns one sample. So now in PyTorch, we're used to seeing the data loader, but the data loader also has a couple of other objects on there that by default, you might not be changing. One of those is the sampler. And the sampler generates a list of indices based on the length of your data set. And those indices are what are passed to this data set get item function. And you will do that for up to your batch size to create a batch. Then the data loader calls this collate function, which just stacks those individual samples we captured into batch tensors. You can write a custom collate function if you want to. For example, maybe you need to pad a variable length sequence, or you're trying to filter out bad samples there. But this collate function creates that final batch tensor that gets fed to the training loop down here. And then you iterate through all the batches in your data loader and you call the training loop on it. So now let's dive in and see this in action. So we're going to be working in this notebook uh, and we're going to create a synthetic data set first, just sort of a basic data set and the functions you can implement. And then we're going to implement our own custom data set to do some inference time denoising with Fourier transforms. It's very exciting, I know, but you don't need to know what that means right now. Uh, since I'm a time series research engineer, our data sets are going to be time series. So here we're just going to import some libraries. Uh, this notebook's available on GitHub. Then we're going to create some synthetic looking electrical data. Um, this is just creating some patterns at different intervals that will look nice in our, our Fourier transform, but also kind of match the seasonality of electrical data. And so the idea was we created some synthetic data that looks kind of noisy and that matches what we might see in real world electrical data. We could also load some real electrical data sets. We'll do that later. It was just quicker to spit out some synthetic data here. And so this is really what I wanted to get into um, is the standard data set. Now, before you can train your model, you need to give PyTorch a way to reference your data set. And that's where this data set class comes in. So right now we're creating a custom data set we call basic time series data set that inherits from the standard PyTorch class data set. And then every PyTorch data set has these three functions you must implement. You have this init, this length, and this get item function. In Python, these are called the dunder functions because of this double underscore. Now there are places, there are plenty of use cases that don't require you to create a custom data set, but I feel like using this as an example, you get to see under the hood with what's actually happening. So the init function just initializes this object. You can do whatever you need to in here. The length function, this is key, just is giving the data loader what the length of an epoch actually is. And then the get item function, this is returning one sample at a given index. The data loader has a sampler that it calls and that sampler will generate an array of indices into your data set of samples. And that is what is calling get item. So depending on the model you're training, you're either gonna return both the input and the target, the X, Y, or you're just gonna return the X. But the idea is you call get item with this index, the data loader calls get item with this index, and then it returns the sample that you need for that training step. And so as I hinted at above, our data loader here will call the data set that we created. So up here, oops, up here we created our basic time series data set class. Then we initialize it here um, with our synthetic data. We give it a window size and then we use it here in our data loader. And so now our data loader has 309 batches based on their batch size. The batch are the number of samples that will feed to the model at a training step. And the reason why we batch things together is it saturates our GPU so we can do a lot of operations in parallel. And so I should say in this example, we're giving our model uh, an input or an X value of uh, 96 time steps from our time series. And we're gonna forecast 24 time steps. And this is just for this, you know, contrived for this example here. Uh, and so do you see down here when we return from get item, we're returning this input window and our target. And again, this would be an array of 96 time steps and this is 24. Uh, but we can configure that, you know, however. And so as a time series research engineer, I've been exploring Fourier transforms a lot more. It's a mathematical way to decompose the patterns over time in a time series. Uh, I find it really fascinating. And so in, in this case, what I wanted to do for our example here, it doesn't really make sense to denoise or to extract the patterns from the time series up front for training. You want that noisy data in training. Uh, but a simple way I thought to try to apply Fourier transforms here would be to denoise the time series at inference time. 
And my thinking there was if we remove the noise when we want to forecast, we're making that sample maybe more of a prototypical pattern that our models already learned from the noisy data, and maybe we get a better prediction. I don't know if this works. I don't know if there's precedent for that, um, but I wanted to start exploring Fourier more in time series. And so for this example of data loading, this gives us a reason to use a custom data set. All right, so now the cool part is uh, we just implemented a custom data set even though it wasn't doing too much, but now this is more of a real use case for custom data set where you can augment or tweak your data uh, as you're loading it in. And so we're creating a new data set called this inference time series data set because again, we don't want to train on non-noisy data. We want our model to be robust. So we're gonna train, we're, I'm sorry, we're just gonna use this for inference time. Uh, and again, we have no idea this will work. It's just something I wanted to try. Uh, so we inherit from this data set class Again, that's familiar. We initialize the class, taking in some inputs here. Uh, this denoise flag will apply or not our key parameter here that does the denoising. Then this function here, Fourier denoise, is just us actually using the fast Fourier transform algorithm to identify the strongest frequencies, zero out some of the weaker ones to then, and then transform it back into a time series. We're not gonna get into what Fourier transform is doing, but just know that it's taking our input signal it's removing some of the frequencies that look noisy, and then it's recreating another time series. So the input to our model is the same. This is just doing some feature engineering on our input uh, to make it less noisy. Uh, but then you see the familiar dunder function for length and the dunder forget item. Um, and this is the same here, like we're returning, you know, this, the actual time series and then the expected target. And then the great part about PyTorch is all these things are modular, so we don't have to do anything different other than just point to the different data set we created. And, and so here we're just going to split the data into train and test sets. We'll generate our data sets. Uh, and then this is exactly like once you have your data set, this is where we would do our training loop, right? We would call train on the model, zero out the gradients, run some inference uh, as part of our training loop, calculate the loss, do our backward propagation, and then step forward applying those gradients to minimize the loss function here. Uh, and that would be one training step. So this is how we would train the model if we were training a model today, but we are not. We are just exploring the data sets. Uh, and then at inference time, this is what it would look like. So here we will create our, uh, we'll create our inference time data set. We will put the denoise to true, and we're hoping that'll make give us better predictions. And then at inference time, we call model eval. We don't store the gradients. That's what this torch no grade, uh, torch no grad is. Uh, and then we make our predictions on the model. And hopefully, yes, hopefully the more accurate due to the cleaner inputs. But again, we don't know. We'll find that out in another video. And so in the next video, we'll actually try to turn this into a model and do some prediction. But today, I just wanted to go through the data sets again. So remember, we have this data set class here that you can implement these three dunder functions here. The length is the size or the number of samples in your data set. And that is the like max n that the data loader will use as far as feeding to its sampler what indices it can generate. Uh, and the get item will take one of those indices generated by the sampler from the data loader to return an actual sample, which is your X, Y pairs. Um, but here you can see we have our data loader. We put the data set that we just created into it. And then we have some parameters on the data loader that under the hood will tell how to sample into our data set. And there are custom samplers you can create. And then once we have this loader, what the loader's doing in our training loop is feeding our samples into this batch size here uh, for each training step. I hope this was helpful. I look forward to making the next one. I'm trying to keep these short and sweet so this way I can stay on schedule. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.